Hi everyone, myself Dr. Vinod. Today we will start with a fresh topic, traction in orthopedics. What is mean by traction? Traction as a literal meaning, we are spreading a limb surface. Yes. So what is the purpose? See, assume that whenever there is an injury, which means a fracture at the limb surface, one part of the bone will be acting under the influence of a agonistic muscle. Yes. And the other part, assume that a distal segment will be acting a, as a unit under the influence of a one more agonistic muscle. Now the antagonistic muscles will be very much weak. They cannot overcome the deforming force or the future deformity. So to overcome it externally, we have to give a traction, which means we are giving an external force to counteract the force that is acting inherently at the fracture area. So just I will explain with an example. Yes, assume that this is a fracture of the shaft of femur. Yes. So in the proximal segment, what are the muscles at attached? So the external rotators with gluteus, medius. Yes. And the medial aspect, it will be psoas okay iliopsoas okay so what will happen to the proximal fragment under the influence of the iliopsoas it will go for flexion yes and external rotation so here adductors will be attached yes okay then vastus will be attached so they will be equally um, this thing shifting or they will be equally displacing the fragment and they will be taking it in the medial aspect as well as they will be displacing the distal fragment proximally. So because of this patient will be having severe deformity as well as pain at the fracture site. So what we are going to do, we will apply a traction either in the below knee in a skin based skin traction or a skeletal traction yes then we will overcome we will counteract this force acting at the fracture site so the patient will be having relief from pain and we will be reducing the fracture then the muscle spasm is already has been overcame in the pre-operative setup. So, intraoperatively, we will, we may not uh, work out more intraoperatively to bring out the reduction because in pre-operative setup itself, we have already reduced the fracture and kept the fracture in traction to maintain the reduction. So, this much work or this much functions are there with the help of the traction. They are done to overcome the deforming force acting at the joint or the limb surface there there should be a counter traction should be applied in an opposite direction in a lower limb fracture the counter traction will be provided by giving a head and elevation which means head and will be downwards and the limb end will be elevated yes so while giving a by giving a counter traction yes we are giving a limb elevation our own body due to gravity acts as a counter traction on the other hand we will be suspending the traction uh, thread or a tra traction twine with the weights so this will act as a continuous traction to counteract the deforming force yes then okay so what is the purpose? Pain relief, overcome muscle spasm, fracture reduction. Yes, yes. So what are the types of traction? One is a skin traction, other is a skeletal traction. Skin traction means we are applying a either a, a this thing, adhesive material. Yes, we are applying a adhesive material or a creep bandage like elastic material to the skin surface externally. Yes and we are holding the limb and we are suspending it with the weight so this is called a skin traction yes on the other hand if we are using some pins either it might be a stinman pin or a denim spin and inserting it into the bone yes either into the 
tibial region yes for a lower limb are into the calcaneal region proximal tibial or distal tibial region or a calcaneal region or a distal femur area so we are applying a pin through the bone ostium okay so that's why it's called as a skeletal traction then we are suspecting the weights based on the weight of the patient so coming to the commonly used tractions first one dunlop traction see what is the purpose first before that we will see how it is done yes so here you can see there is a skin traction or a suspending sling present in the forearm region and the elbow is flexed up to 60 to 90 degree so what is the indication for reduction of the supracondylar humerus fracture or a distal humerus fracture so whenever there is a difficulty in reduction of these fractures we can apply a dunlop traction so there this combination of two tractions yes here there is a sling or we apply a skin traction in the forearm region and here there is a skeletal traction in the olecranon area okay so that is a combination of a skeletal traction as well as a skin traction or a sling, tra sling traction for support and there is an olecran or skeletal traction inserted so that's that will be exerting a force in this direction so that there will we can reduce the fracture of the supracondylar region in children or a distal humerus fractures in adults coming to the next one thomas splint fixed traction so already in the topic of orthosis and prosthesis we have discussed about the thomas splint how to apply it now how to use a thomas splint as a fixed traction see assume that this is a limb yes so i have i will be applying a skin traction so i will explain skin traction now so i will be applying a skin traction for hold or i will be applying a skeletal traction then i will be suspending that through the thomas splint and I will be suspending the one end with weight. So I can use to the Thomas splint either to suspend the weight directly because the Thomas splint will be having a tip curved like this. Okay, here I will be suspending the weight or directly I will be tying the thread here. So either I can suspend the traction with the weight or directly I can tie the rope here. So this will act as a fixed traction. So with the help of Thomas splint, we can either use either give traction in two ways. Either we can give a fixed traction by directly tying the rope of the skin traction or we can suspend the weights with the uh, this thing end of the traction twine. So the next one bowler brown frame. Yes. So this is one of the special equipment for providing traction. See here you can see three pulleys. One two and three yes and one more difference you can see it is not a straight one as in case of a thomas splint here there is a angle okay this angle is to accommodate the thigh and there will be certain degree of flexion to maintain certain degree of flexion at the knee joint so what is this purpose this can prevent knee contracture okay so since already flex is maintained in flexion it's not in extension so it will be better for mobilization post operatively so regarding the functions of the pulley yes so the first pulley is to keep the foot in dorsiflexion yes so this will maintain or prevent the foot drop okay yes okay then so i will using a different color now yeah so the first pulley is to maintain the foot in dorsiflexion yes and the second pulley see here the second pulley comes here so this is in the direction or axis of the femur yeah so since there is a lower limb 
the skin traction or skeletal traction they are used so the second pulley is in alignment with the axis of the femur or parallel to the long axis of the femur and the third pulley is in alignment with the foot or the tibia okay see these are the uses of the three pulleys in bb frame so it is more commonly used for a shaft tibia fracture or shaft femur fracture or any lower limb fracture one of the most commonly used splint to maintain in traction or to immobilize in traction is bb frame yes and sometimes even some patient if it is not cooperative that time we can circumferentially apply a bandage in case of the bb frame yes so the next one box skin traction yes so our routine skin traction see in routine skin traction as you can see in both in the both in the sagittal as well as in the um, this thing anteroposterior plane see first we will apply generally a yeah, first with a cotton pad yes so this cotton pad is to prevent the pressure related or a compression related bones yes because continuously you are uh, applying the traction so thus will exert some friction related bones or injury friction bones so pre to prevent that cotton padding will be done so uh, above that we will be applying a creep bandage yes or a elastic bandage yes and inside that first we will be applying a band or a uh, this thing skin traction belt that will be coming off where with the skin traction bandage adhesive bandage will be there in adhesive type bandage will be there so that adhesive tape will be extending from the proximal part of the leg yes and this adhesive belt will be attached to a small cardboard in that cardboard the twine will be coming out that twine can be suspended with weights so generally for skin traction we use up to 10 pounds so assume that 4 to 5 kg is the maximum weight we can use in case of a box skin traction indication yes intertrochanteric fracture shaft femur fracture which are my, minimally displaced yes so they are commonly used or the distal femur fracture we will be using a prox uh, this thing below knee skin traction for intertrochanteric fractures we will be using an above knee skin traction or a box skin traction yes coming to the next one hamilton russell traction so what is the difference here see here also similarly the in that uh, leg region they will be applying a yeah? will be applying a yeah? skin traction only but to add to it yes as a add on advantage yes as an add on advantage you can see there is a sling sling that is suspending the distal part of the femur distal femur will be suspended and this will be attached to a pulley yes so this is the difference in case of a hamilton russell traction where the distal part of the femur will be suspended or we will be applying a bolster here bolster here soft bolster to keep the knee in flexion so this will prevent the or this will relax the thigh muscles yes so what are the indications any shaft fractures of femur so most commonly they are indicated for the pertrochanteric fractures as well as shaft fractures of the femur so these tractions and uh, these things are generally used previously these are like historical importance only only for the sake of clearing the exams routine clinical setup now the newer generation orthopedicians they don't prefer preferentially because uh, because we have very uh, latest instruments and we have a very good uh, post operative care and equipments so we need to operate the patients earlier since these traction methods are very very less likely now and especially in a uh, private setup generally uh, many surgeons like to operate the patients as early as possible only few times in case of a polytrauma when the patients uh, 
general condition is endangered then only we, they prefer to uh, operate the case early or else generally we try to operate as early as possible in case of a uh, any fracture yes so coming to the next traction perkins skeletal traction till now we skin we seen skin traction so the perkins skeletal traction what is the indication they are used for the proximal uh, fractures a proximal condylar fractures of tibia yes then and the most common indication shaft femur fracture yes so the uh, uh, this thing skeletal traction pin are generally most commonly used is steinman pin is inserted from the lateral to medial direction just palpating the we will use a uh, one finger a uh, 2 cm uh, this thing depth either behind as well as lateral to the tuberosity so that is the most common location we prefer and we insert from lateral to medial direction to prevent injury to the common peroneal nerve yes so what is the indication main indication shaft to femur fracture reduction so as i already mentioned in skin traction they are preferred only in minimally displaced fracture but here when the fracture is much displaced we need to suspend more weight to bring the displaced fragments or to reduce the displaced fracture fragments so that time we prefer skeletal traction in skeletal traction we can use weight up to 10% body weight up to even we can use sometimes 10 kg also we can extend it 10 to 15 percentage we can use up to the body weight of the patient but on the other hand in case of the um, this thing skin traction the maximum limit is up to 5 kg or 10 pounds only yes so skeletal traction is more preferred when a patient is more bulky or the fracture is more displaced so to bring the fracture fragments in reduction and to maintain the traction continuously we require skeletal traction and one more add on point regarding the pins in uh, younger patients we prefer application of steinman pin in older patients since the bone might be osteoporotic we can prefer denham spin because they contain serrations at the center for better bone hold and this one is called as bowler stirrup yes so this stirrup will be connected yes connected to this steinman pin or the denham spin then here that twine will be our string will be connected then we can suspend the weight required to reduce the fracture next coming to the traction used in spinal conditions first one head halter traction as the name suggest it is halting the head to provide immobilization to the cervical spine it contains two slings yes so one sling is suspending or supporting the chin region and one more sling that is suspending or supporting the occiput region and it is connected to the spreader plate and it is connected to a pulley with the weights attached the weights normally used are around 3 to 5 lbs or pounds which roughly estimates to 1.5 to 2.5 kilograms so what are the indications patients with cervical spondylosis yes patients having continuous pain due to cervical spondylosis we can give intermittent or continuous cervical traction with head halter traction second one patients with or patients posted for fusion of cervical spine so pre operatively and post operatively to maintain the reduction we can use head halter traction the third one see whenever a patient is having a minor subluxation or due to trauma at the region of the cervical spine for reduction continuous traction is required that time we can use head halter traction for reduction yes okay next one it is crutch field traction see here in head halter traction we are applying the traction belt externally yes on the other hand here crutch field traction this support yes this is called as spike 
and this instrument is called as crutch field tongs yes so these tongs are with the spike they are inserted into the parietal region to get the hold yes so the, the spike will be uh, inserted at the parietal region to have a support at the head region then we will be suspending yeah weight through the string attached to the tongs yes so this weight will be around 8 to 18 kgs can be used so what are the indications similar to that cervical spondylosis cervical spine disc degeneration yes and for fusion patients posted for fusion surgeries that time preoperatively and postoperatively we can maintain them with crutch field traction and fourth one to reduce the dislocation or subluxation and one more thing the distance between the spikes in the tongue should be 10 centimeter at least if the distance is less there is chance of failure okay yes so coming to the next one hollow pelvic traction hollow is the this ring part that is attached to the a skull region yes so this part is called as hollow and there are one two three and one more thing which is not visible four vertical rods are there then there is a pelvic yes pelvic brim or pelvic belt with attached two rods so there will be two rods in horizontal aspect in the pelvic region that are inserted to the iliac crest okay the, that will be inserted to the ilia crest this will be inserted to the skull bones on the four points okay so then this halo and the pelvic they are suspended by a vertical four rods so what are the indications spinal deformity correction and to maintain the spine yes spinal of post correction for maintenance of the this thing corrected deformity it can be used then step by step correction of deformity kyphosis and scoliosis in case of tb spine or pot spine for this purpose this hollow pelvic traction are applied so coming